Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So today we're doing this KSP sun station review and we're going to be talking about the time taken to build this sun station, difficulties, what we learnt and the new projects. Oh, I'm looking forward to the new projects. First of all, time taken. I do not know exactly how much time it actually took to do this whole sun station, but definitely over two days worth. Over two days worth. To over two day, full two days, like 24 hour days over more than that it's just crazy definitely uh difficulties uh one difficulty is i did not know exactly how much fuel it was going to take to get the the sun station parts as close as possible to the sun and because of that uh we had to actually refill the sun several times at least three times i had to refill roughly well that roughly three rocket max fuel tanks worth I had to refill them so and, and you know I had to actually, what that meant was I had to make a ship called Refill Ship, or Refill Ya, I think that's what I used to call them, um, and that roughly had around maybe less than a Rocket Max fuel tank worth of fuel, roughly, and so obviously you have to actually dock a couple times with the sun station in order to refill it. So that's what I had to do. Our difficulties, again, smashing. Just the ships keep on smashing non-stop, it's crazy. Uh, Rocket Max fuel tanks, I will never... I'll, I'll actually try and resist using rock max fuel tanks. When I mean that, I mean resist using more than 10, roughly. And you will see, like, in a couple of seconds, why. Uh, what we learnt, we learnt how to do an interplanetary docking, which is now very easy for me. Uh, the only thing is, is that it takes a lot of time. I mean, it's easy. I mean, it's just like a normal docking as you would do around Kerbin. The only difference is that it is very, very time consuming. And it does consume a bit more fuel. So you did, you did need a bit more fuel to, to do the docking. But nevertheless, it is quite an exciting thing. Uh, so that's what we learned. Uh, again, what we learned, just keep away from too many Rocket Max fuel tanks. Um, and that's that. New projects. Let's talk about new projects. First of all. Now, I don't, obviously, we're not going to do another sun station project. That's it. No more sun station. No more getting close to the sun. No more Icarus. Uh, right now, you're looking on the screen. There is a bug. We, we, that happens so many times. Ridiculous. It's sort of like an anti-gravity thing. But um, when you try and get close enough to it, the game just lags like hell. You get one frame per second. It's crazy. But the only thing you can do about that is just delete the ship. But anyway, back on tracks with the project. Back on track. Um, I was thinking of making a... A ship called the Easter Egg Hunter. Oh, you like that sound? Yeah, I like I like the name of it. So what Easter Egg Hunter will do is we'll make a ship. And this is going to be like a, not an SSTO, of course, just a big ship. And what we do is we visit every single Easter Egg within the game. Um, in fact, I have not seen all the Easter Eggs in the game. I'm actually quite curious. We might need to use a mod to do this. Um, there is a mod called Nmap, I believe, where you need to have like, you need to circle around the planet a couple of times in different angles so that you can map out where the Easter eggs are. So that's probably something we're going to do. I believe some other guy, Scott Manley, I believe he's done something like that. He used Nmap, but I don't know if he's looked up all the Easter eggs. I don't really watch all his videos. I ain't got time for that. But I definitely want to look at the Easter eggs myself and probably will add some sort of story to it. Someone else suggested to do some sort of Macy Dean type of thing. Like a, like a storyline, so a story for each Easter egg. For instance, if we go to the pyramids, we'll add a story behind it or something like that. Like, I don't know. We might do that, might not. Who knows? Uh, another idea is a portable, kind of like a portable planetary base or something. Maybe what I mean what I mean by that is that we would build a base, but it's a base that will be portable. So you make a base, but you make it in space, and it will transport itself to its destination, so let's say we're going to Duna, it will transport itself to Duna, we would have to separate the pieces while orbiting Duna, and then one by one, it's probably going to take like a couple of hours to do actually, we would, um, you know, take them down to Duna on the surface, and then dock them together, that's, uh, I'm not saying we're going to go to just Duna, maybe we'll go to Leith, maybe go to Eve, I probably would not go to Eve for for a base, definitely would not, not too many problems when it comes to the amount of gravity, there is. the gravity is very high there, and the atmosphere would be, actually, the good thing about the atmosphere is that it slows down your descent quite heavily, so that kind of helps you when it comes to re-entry. Uh, another idea 
is, well, it's kind of a, a bit of a weird idea. It kind of involves you guys, where I kind of make this kind of, this defense station, where you guys would make a ship that is aimed at destroying the defense station. Uh, that's kind of like an idea, but it involves you guys. It doesn't really involve me too much. I would be making the defense station where you guys are making the attack, the like a missile silo or something that is aimed at defend at, at destroying the the station, the defense station. That's just an idea. I would very much rather go with the the Easter egg hunter idea. I haven't seen all the Easter eggs. You guys probably haven't seen all the Easter eggs, and I'm really looking forward to making a single ship that would be able to visit these Easter eggs. So that's that's something. That I would definitely enjoy. And it, looking on the screen, look at that, guys. I had so many of those types of smashes. It's incredible. <laughs> and it's weird how, if you have a look on the left, on the staging, you'll see how there's an engine that is not actually activated, even though we did technically press spacebar to activate them. See, when an engine, when a Rocket Max fuel tank breaks off, it doesn't activate. And that, that also counts with the stability enhancer. But anyway, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned a few things. We spoke about time taking, difficulty is what we learned, new projects. I definitely want to go for the Easter egg project. Leave your comments, suggestions, and hope you enjoyed. Bye. <laughs>